girl! Get out. Daddy? Oh, oh, okay, baby. I'm here. Okay, it's all right. Simple exchange. You come with us. The girl takes a walk. Let her go now. As I say, take your hands out of your pockets. Sure thing, pal. It's alive. Let her go now or we all die. Take him. He has a grenade. He's bluffing. He wouldn't risk killing his own daughter. If she's going to die, she's going to die with me. My way, not yours. My God damn it, Roger, get out of the way. Move to your left. Come on. Put the pin back in. Officer Murtaugh. Don't be foolish. Look at the hardware. Move to your left. Move to your left. Look at the firepower. You're grounded. Riggs is gone. Put the pin back in the grenade. Yeah, if you come closer, and we all die. No. I don't think so. Come on, honey. Come on, honey. There's a smoker. Bingo. Get Connor back for Lethal Weapon 3 or 4 or... No, I mean... Um, uh, you know, Dick would be the first to say this, that... that it was, you know, as much as he loved working with the same cast and crew and, and, you know, and Danny and Mel, um, the money was also very enticing, you know, um, cause Dick spent so many years in television, mm -hmm. uh, making scale per week and all. And, and when he really hit features hard, he, he, he earned it. I mean, he really earned it. He was, uh, those films are so well put together. Um, and I ran dailies of lethal weapon when I was still working at Amblin um, Dick had me running dailies at night up at his house and it was just one big gathering and, and they would talk about things, you know, among the, some of the cast and, and it was, it was a very collaborative effort, but Dick, Dick just, he, he knew what to do. I mean, he was, he was a master at that. Yeah. It's one of the all time great scripts and one of the all time great movies. Busey told me that he was actually denied initially the opportunity to play the part he played uh, what is it? Not Mr. Bishop. Who is he Mr. in that Joshua? movie? Mr. Joshua, right? And uh, he said that his entertainment attorney got involved. Actually, I think his entertainment attorney was Steve. Was um, I want to say Steve Bloom from Bloom Hergot? Oh, because okay. that was my law firm for a while. So there was like a tie-in. But I think he called Silver and said, "You promised him a meeting, so he gets you got to give him the meeting." And they did give it to him. And I guess he sold him in that meeting. Uh, to be the crazy, and it actually is one of Busey's better roles. I agree. I, did I tell you, we were at we were down at the beach for brunch years ago, and my wife goes, "You got to call Gary Busey. I know he lives around here, and I really want to meet him." <laughs> and I'm like, "You're asking, you know, that's a, that comes with that's a big payload. <laughs> you're ask you're asking a lot now, Busey. For people listening, his place he leaves his front door open, and it's like a tunnel, like to get to his you know, there's this hallway, that hallway, and there's like a tunnel to his living room. He overlooked the beach. And um, and that was so he could be up on his furniture and like spring down on you like Kato from <laughs> Pink Panther. Yeah. So I go up there, right? Thank God there's a Steelers game on. Um, I went up there and the doors open. So I get it, right? Like immediately my Viet Cong radar goes off like entrapment <laughs> imminent, right? <laughs> right? So I start shouting down the hallway. Gary, 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 I got a kid coming through. My daughter's really young at the time, and I don't want some giant human being <laughs> jumping off the furniture, collapsing in on us, yeah. you know, and he's, of course, very gracious. And he like looked down. Oh, oh, hey, how are you? And he climbs down off a dresser or whatever, an armoire or whatever. He's hanging on like Batman and, you know, couldn't have been nicer. Could not have been nicer. And uh, he is great in that movie. He gets a lot of flack. I don't know how much of it's deserved because in my interactions with him, he was always pleasant, professional, and always thinking about the project. Now, we know things spiral out of control. Milius, 
obviously had him on Big Wednesday and the office, Milius's office referred to him as Gary Abusey. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just want to say I never saw any, they referred to him as Gary Abusey, but I never saw any of that. What would you say Thomas Ian Nicholas worked with him? Uh, worked with him on rookie of the year when when Thomas was 12. Oh. And uh he did have that that name, you know, of Gary mm-hmm. Abusey, but Thomas and Marla, his mom said that he was the sweetest he was he was rough on some of the yeah some of the crew yeah. and cast, but he was always a gentleman uh, to Marla and Thomas. And so I thought, you know, that, and that this this was all before the accident, right? Well, I no, this is for me. This is after the accident. He did talk about the accident. In fact, he actually had Loda, my wife, feel this place in the skull where the steel plate was. Like he was oh. like, "Put your hand there. Put your hand there. That's where the steel plate." And I'm like, Gary, you know, but. I I'd never enc- enc- encountered the Gary Abusey angle. And the story was that Terry Leonard, you know, the legendary stunt coordinator had to kind of keep him on ice or keep straighten him out. Uh, and Leonard came through Milius's office. He's the guy who gets blown out of the chopper on fire in apocalypse. Now M- among many, like l- the guy under the truck for Raiders, I think is yeah. also Leonard. Um, but <laughs> he goes, he goes, I've broken every bone in my body twice. And I'm like, and that's why you're the stunt man, and I'm behind a desk. <laughs> Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter, kill all masters. Go to no quarter, kill all masters.com. Rated R.